Alright, this uh, shorter tutorial is going to be on how to make uh, the pinwheels for the pinwheel bunting. Um, so, if you have a kit, they give you five pieces of fabric, all the same size. Um, what I did was I just chose four of them and they're folded over from the fold to the bias. Um, and all I did was cut a piece of um, batting, which you have to provide, this does not come in your kit to fit that rectangular shape. And I just fitted it in there and then folded the top over. All right, so the, the top and the bottom would be the same fabric from the kit. I mean, you can mix and match. You can cut squares and have the back be one fabric and the top be another fabric. I mean, you can do whatever you want. You can be as creative as you want. But these are just left over, so I'm gonna do the tutorial. Um, but anyway, if you're just doing what I did, taking that one piece of fabric they sent you and it has the fold and the bias tape would be one other, I just ironed it, I opened the top up, cut my piece of batting, laid it in the middle, and then folded the top back down. But since I have these, I'm gonna put the bottom one face down or if you choose to cut squares according to the pattern size and then mix and match your backings and fronts, that's fine too. Um, so there's my bottom and it's going to be face down and I'm going to take my batting and this is just all left over so I didn't uh, really measure okay but it should be big enough lay my batting in between there and then I'm going to lay my top fabric face down with the right side up okay um the pattern does come with this template and I made a copy um, I never just use the, the template that comes with it because it can get destroyed, it can get ripped, it can get lost. So I always make a copy, which I'm able to do because I have a printer copier. Um, and then um, I took my non-fabric scissors and I just cut along the dotted lines all the way around so you get this template, which is going to help you make all of your pinwheels. Alright, so now that you have your fabric all sandwiched together, your back batting front and you've got your template cut out um, you're gonna place your template and when you place your template on your fabric you want to make sure you have at least a half an inch of extra all the way around okay at least a half an inch so space it out and now you can do this however you want um, I just I mean you can you can pin here 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 and here um, but me being my brave self, I just put a pin through the middle um, to sandwich everything together. I mean, you do it your way, okay? Whatever you're comfortable with, you do it your way. And then I have these friction pens, which I get from the Quilt Cow. They are um, erased with heat and nothing ever stays behind and they come in lots of different colors. They even were sold last night on the Wednesday Live. Um, so I'm just gonna take it and now I'm just gonna trace all the way around. Okay, this is why if you want to pin more, just go ahead and pin. Like, you don't have to do exactly what I do. If you find a better method that works for you, go ahead and do that. So I'm just gonna trace all the way around. Now, if you have darker fabric, um, you are tracing on the front here. Um, so I have I have these options, which are chalk. Um, this one is a chalk pencil, which I got from the Quilted Cow. Um, you just click click the end and the, it comes out. Or this one here, it's got this little rolly tip right here. So when I, it just rolls around your fabric and then it's got the brush on the other side that you can brush off your chalk. So I use those for darker fabrics where my uh, friction pen wouldn't really work. Um, but if I mean, there's lots of things out there. Some of you have things that I've probably never heard of or seen. So just use what works for you. But you do need this to be outlined on the top. You can't do it on the back side. I know the back side is sometimes lighter, but you're going to be sewing this from the top to sandwich all these together. So it really needs to be outlined from the either the top or the back. Okay. If you're using the same fabric, it wouldn't matter. All right, so I think I got that all outlined. So there it is, if you can see it. And now what you're gonna do is you are gonna take this to the machine. So from the back, if you're using different fabrics, this is a much lighter color. 
So you could draw on that, but if you're using the same fabric, you're just going to have to find a markings uh, pen or something that works for you. So if you can see all of it now, I'm going to take this to the machine and I'm just going to stitch all the way around on the lines that I drew. So I'm just going to choose a, a starting point and then when I get to an end, I make sure my needle down and then I, I turn it, I pivot it, and then just keep going. So I never lift my needle up until I'm at the very end. All right, so as you can see, there it is all sewn. I took this over to the iron and I put heat on it so it erased all my pen markings and I'm just left with my stitch line. So there it is all there. Um, now what I did, so I guess a helpful hint would be before I began, um, I cut out all my batting, put it between all the layers of fabric and I drew all of this. And then um, once I had everything drawn, I got, I got two, you could probably make up to 10, but I only got eight out of my kit because I used one of the fabrics as um, the string. But if you didn't use, if you used your own fabric to make the string, um, you could get 10 of these, but I got eight because I just used four of the fabrics and I used the fifth fabric um, to make the string that it's all connected to. So um, it's up to you really what you want to do there. But anyway, I drew them all out first with my batting inserted, and then I just went and sewed all of them, and then um, I cut everything. So I only have one rotary cutter right now, and so it was annoying to um, switch between this pinking blade, which the Quilta Cow does offer. Um, they offered it on last night's show, which is, this is very helpful. I do have pinking scissors, but in between here, um, it's very narrow and this worked the best to get in there. Um, so I found it annoying to switch between this and the regular blade. So that's why I did it the way I did. Drew everything, sew everything, and then I can cut everything at the same time and only have to put this on one time. So this is the pinking blade that goes on my 45 millimeter uh, Ulfa. This is the one I really enjoy. And last night they sold on the Quilted Cow, they had a magenta one, which i never seen. I think it was brand new. And so hopefully I'm able to get one. But if not, I'll try again later. Um, so I'm just going to put that on. And I'm going to take my ruler. And the reason why you need a half an inch is things can shift, especially when you're batting. You can do this with a walking foot. I did this with a regular foot. Everything is sandwiched together. You can even baste your layers if that makes you more comfortable. Some of you have basting spray. Some of you have basting powder. Some of you can pin, pin it, you know, as much as you want. I happen to live on the wild side sometimes and don't always do that. I kind of freestyle things. Sometimes it gets me in trouble. Most of the time it works. But I'm going to, right here on this edge right here, I'm going to line that up with a, a quarter of an inch on my ruler. And I'm going to use my pinking blade and see. So the pinking blade helps it from fraying, okay? If you were just to do a straight cut, it would fray and fray and fray until it met this line. So the pinking blade allows you to cut your fabric, gives you a nice decorative edge, and uh, it helps it, the fabric from fraying. So I'm gonna turn it now, and I'm gonna do the same side, same thing to all my sides. All right, get rid of that. Now I'm going to turn and do the same thing here, and that didn't quite cut, so freestyle that sucker. And on the side, like that. All right. Now, um, again, I live on a little bit of the wild side, so I am going to freehand this. Um, you do not want to cut all the way up to this part. You want to cut close to it, but not right up to it because you could accidentally cut into your seam. So you're just going to go slowly and cut through. And you're going to get close, and then you're going to turn it, and you're going to do that to each one. That's why the pinking blade can be helpful because the scissors are going to, my scissors are going to be way too chunky. And I'm going to be cutting into all my seams with my scissors. I didn't quite get this very well. There it is, okay? So, there it is, cutting in. All right, I cut close, but not up to that seam, all the way around, okay? So now, it is time to make the pinwheel. So, when I first made my kit, I used um, my Craft Fuse glue to, to glue all my points in, and then I tried 
hand sewing all my buttons. I don't know how to use the machine to do it. I haven't figured that out yet, if it's even possible. And I found that getting through, once you put all the tips into the middle, it's very thick. And the button's not very big. And I found it very, very difficult. I was even frustrated trying to hand sew it. Even though it looks nice hand sewing, some of you I don't have thimbles. I was using everything I could to try to push that needle through the thread and different methods. And uh, after the first one, I didn't even want to make my second kit because I was really frustrated. Uh, but anyway, I reread the directions and it says hot glue. Okay, now you're free to do whatever you want. I used hot glue on the second one and my life was so much easier. So I am going to use hot glue. There's my hot glue gun, it should be warm. On this one. Okay, so I'm just gonna start here and I always I'm always gonna take the right uh, see if on this triangle, I'm always gonna take this point, the right point. If, if I'm looking at it, it's the right point. All right, and I'm gonna be consistent with that all the way around. So I'm gonna take my hot glue and I'm gonna start a little bit down and then put a little bit of glue all the way up and then I'm gonna fold that into the center. Okay, give it a moment and then I'm gonna turn and do the same thing, put a little bit of glue there and fold it into the center. Now when you're folding it, this line can line up with right underneath it. So it's, okay. Oops, I got a little too much on that one. All right. <clears throat> I just found that this hot glue worked so much better. I was so relieved on the second one when I did it. And the reason why I'm starting a little bit down is so that it, um, Instead of just gluing the point down, I'm gluing a little bit of the fabric right here to the middle as well, if that makes any sense. So I start down a little bit, go up, and then I go up and push that down. All right. And you can just do the tips if you want. I mean, it's your pinwheel. Whatever you feel you want to do, no judgment. Okay. So there it is, there's all the tips folded down and glued and you've got your pinwheel. And if you feel like, oh, I wanna cement it a little bit more, just stick it under your fabric and put a little bit of glue and glue whatever you want down. Like, like this one here, maybe I could glue closer a little bit. So I'm gonna put a little glue in there and glue that middle down a little bit more, okay? Uh, so it does look cute when you use two different fabrics. I did not do that on my original ones, but if I made another one, I might mix and match. Uh, and then you're going to the kit, they give you the buttons, and they usually give you two colors of buttons. These are left over, so I'm going to do, do the blue one here. And again, since I had such frustration, I really was going to give up. <laughs> I made it through the first one because I wanted to finish it. Uh, I'm just going to put some hot glue on the back of the button. All right, and then I'm just going to put it down in the middle. And there it is. And then you just let it set. Now for the button, it has holes. Some of that hot glue, when I press it down, it is coming up through the holes, but you know what? It dries clear. I don't, I don't, I don't mind. And so there is the pinwheel. So <clears throat> here it is a little bit up close. You can see it better. I mean, I've used a uh, one color top thread, one color bottom thread, so you di get different colored threads. Um, this one is the mix and match, which I actually really like. I wish I had done this on one of the pinwheels. It's actually really cute, but next time. Um, so there it is. And now when you make it, you'll make, you'll make your string. And this part, you know, I spaced mine out, I think every five inches on mine. And this, uh, I put the ruler here and then from the tip, I measured out five inches, and this part aligned with the five inches. So say this was five inches, I put this there on five inches. So this part of the tip is gonna be on your string, and this is gonna be on the string. So I clipped, I clipped these two parts in place, and I sewed this part down. I just went on the same sewing line that I have there on the string. But this part, this, this tip part that's on the string, I, I glued down. I took my, my handy hot glue and I, I glued that tip down. So I only sewed this part onto the string. But anyway, they turn out super cute. Um, I made two of them. And next time I'm definitely going to mix and match the fabric because I really like this.
problems. <laughs> I'm kind of sad. I did think about it yesterday, but anyway, doing the tutorial gave me a new idea. Okay, so that is how you make the pinwheels for the pinwheel bunting kit. And you can get kits and fabric from the Quilt of Cow, and they offer the pattern at the Quilt of Cow too. Um, or you can get the pattern from them and use your own fabric and buttons. Um, choice is up to you, but there we are.